Hello, Fantastic Beast fans. In sifting through the teaser trailer again, I've discovered a few little details that raise more questions for what's to come. And I'd really like to see what you think. I'm Susan Chappelle with Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts to bring you the clues. Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. First, in a prior theory, I showed a couple of nods from Fantastic Beast to Doctor Who. I've linked it above and in the description below. But almost as soon as I posted that video, I noticed one other Doctor Who wink. In the scene where we see someone using Dumbledore's Deluminator, the person steps back into what appears to be a phone booth. As we've already talked about several time travel or manipulation hints, a link to the time and space traveling TARDIS of Doctor Who would be a biggie. Is the one in Crimes of Grindelwald a telephone box or a police call box? Here are some images of vintage phone booths, and here are some of police call boxes. And the TARDIS! The box in the film seems to be darker in color, but the lettering seems to say telephone. With that fog, it's really hard to say. Either way, I wonder if the call box could serve as a 1920s entrance to the Ministry of Magic. If so, does that mean the person entering there has some connection with the Ministry? But that's not the only thing. Thanks to Dalton Perkinson for pointing out to me that there's another person present. Look closely through the fog. You'll notice a person to the right of the one holding the deluminator, who recedes back behind the gateway. I'll play it again in slow motion. So here are some questions. Is it Dumbledore holding the Deluminator, or has he loaned it out, perhaps to Newt? Or is Newt the person meeting Dumbledore? Or is it someone meeting Newt, or none of the above? And most curious of all, why would whoever it is remove the lights at what appears to be the end of their meeting rather than beginning? Unless someone was coming and to hide the booth transforming back to normal. Whatever is happening here, the use of the telephone box not only reminds us of a Harry Potter magical portal, but provides yet another cross fandom wink at Doctor Who and Companion. In that same prior Doctor Who video, we saw the moving statue, caught by the ever alert Suvi Holm, behind Tina that reminded me of the beloved episode Blink. At first, I thought that the moving statue was a witch or wizard in disguise preparing to pounce. Now, Suvi has another theory that's even more intriguing. Notice how in this scene, Queenie's dress is moving on its own, doing the ironing. All around the apartment, rolling pins, irons, and clothesline do Queenie's chores. If she's skilled at getting inanimate objects to work for her, perhaps she's behind the moving statue, as we next see her creeping secretively along the streets of Paris. But I've also been pondering yet another possibility. Notice with the statue, as the hand moves the cloak back and the foot goes wider, it reveals just a bit more of the column underneath. Tina is carefully watching who's about as she circles back toward that statue. Perhaps she's not about to get attacked, but rather about to enter a secret passage newly revealed. Which then leads to this scene. She is wearing the same coat, after all, with the collar turned up. A secret passage from a church to the catacombs in search of a hidden relic or secret knowledge would be incredibly cool. And such a magical twist on Indiana Jones or Dan Brown. As Suvi has also pointed out, there are an abundance of birds in Fantastic Beasts from the Thunderbird to the breeding of owls and pigeons to the standing on rooftops. And as I pointed out in a prior video, on Queenie in particular, an abundance of wings. She's got her pin, her necklace, and the lapels of her dress. Paul Mueller also noted the link between Queenie's wings and the Thunderbird on Madame Pickery's jacket. 
and in one of the graphic items created by Mina Lima and included in some of the companion materials for the first film, Suvi caught this curious symbol for the Owl Air Force. It's on a book belonging in the Goldstein home. Susie and I have long been wondering how an Owl Air Force will come to play in the series. By the amount of merchandising with the Owl Air Force, it seems that it may not be merely a book, but may actually come to play a significant role, which would make sense for the World War II parallels. One very intriguing parallel I want to point out to you. Look at this emblem for the Owl Air Force pendant. Now, look at this historic insignia for the Chinese Air Force during World War II. Remember, China will fought on the side of the Allies. Will the Owl Air Force be the magical equivalent of muggle carrier pigeons to send secret communications? Or is it just a code name for wizards battling it out in air? Or could potions be strapped to owls to be dropped like bombs? However it is to be included, I'm betting that Queenie, with all her wings, is somehow a part. Legitimacy in a fighter pallet would surely be a valuable trait. And these owl air bombings bring us to another clue. Though Dumbledore is smiling, that rooftop scene with Newt hides some dark undertones. Pottermore revealed that this takes place on top of St. Paul's Cathedral in London, and I suspect this iconic location was chosen for what it foreshadows. During the Blitz bombings of London, while the city was destroyed all around it, St. Paul's, though damaged, remained standing. The cathedral became a symbol of togetherness, survival, and suffering, but also provided hope to the people when they could see St. Paul's still stood. However, from the vantage point which Dumbledore and Newt now have of the city below, I imagine it will provide a very different perspective during the later films of the series. I fully expect that we'll return to this meeting place somewhere near the series climax, with Dumbledore and Newt looking down upon the magnitude of a devastated London. Secret passageways, clandestine meetings, and preparations for war, all of which hints at the thriller element coming our way. But what do you think? Who is meeting in the Deluminator scene? Will Queenie be a magical pilot? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video. And please check out my newest release, Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts, the video book. I've linked to it in the description below. Until next time.